right, um, number five, it says the following table shows the height <clears throat> at half second intervals of a rock that breaks free from the top of a 290 foot tall cliff and falls without obstruction to the river. Um, there's three parts, so here's the table. Um, step one of three says the linear function of best fit that models the height of the rock after t seconds is h of t equals negative 48t plus 310. What is the linear model height of the rock at time t equals zero round to the nearest foot? Okay, so this model is not exactly linear. Um, when a rock falls due to gravity, it's not linear. But they give you the linear equation and you want to plug in t equals zero and then solve. So we have h of t equals negative 48t plus 310. We're going to plug in a 0. So that means h of 0 equals negative 48 times 0 plus 310. So anytime you have a linear, you plug in zero. Zero times anything just wipes out, and we're just left with 310. So <clears throat> 310 would be our answer here. Part two of three says the quadratic function of best fit that models the height of the rock after t seconds is given by this function, and that looks like it would probably better model the data. Uh, given what is the calculated quadratic height um, of the rock at time t equals zero. So if I was to plug a zero in for t, again, this whole, everything with a t in it would, would uh, zero out. So for the quadratic model, we would get negative 16 times zero squared plus 290. Okay, so 0 squared times 16 is still going to be 0. That whole term would 0 out. We would be left with 290. And then part 3 wants to know which model appears to be more appropriate. Okay, and it would be the quadratic model based on that initial value starting at h, the height of 290 when time is 0. The linear giving us 310 doesn't match. All right, number six. Sophia bought a puppy and has been tracking its weight at the end of each month since it was born. She was told by the dog breeder that the dog should have an adult weight somewhere between 45 and 50 pounds. So somewhere between 45 and 50 pounds. Um, the linear function, WT, is equal to 3.99 t minus 3.18. Um, this models the weight of the puppy after t months, after months. By this model, what is the extrapolated weight of the dog after two years round to the nearest pound? Okay, so a couple things you gotta be aware of. When we extrapolate, um, the further we get away, um, the further outside of the range we are, the more inaccurate our results will be. <clears throat> and then this is telling us months. So there's 12 months here, and they want us to figure it out for two years. So that'd be 24 months. So that's another thing you got to be aware of. Whenever they change the, um, I guess, the units on you. So two years, okay, you got to convert that, two years. There's 12 months in one year. Okay, so you divide out years two times, 12 will give you 24 months. Okay, so we're gonna be plugging 24 into the given equation. So the weight of this puppy after 24 months or two years based on the given equation is gonna be equal to 3.99 times 24, and then minus 3.18, okay? So I'm just gonna plug that into the calculator and let it number crunch for me. 
um, clear this out. I'm going to do 3.99 times 24 and then minus 3.18. That gives us 92.58, which we're told that dogs should be between 48 and 50 pounds as an adult. So 92.58, we're gonna to round to the nearest pound. So it's gonna say 93, we're gonna round it to 93. And then we will continue, and it says, how do you interpret the results from the previous step? Um, the linear model doesn't seem realistic. The linear model seems realistic. Okay, so I'm going to say it doesn't because we were told between 45 and 50, and um, this just will continue to grow without bound. So every month that puppy is going to get bigger and bigger. So we're going to say the linear model doesn't seem realistic. 